It's not news to anyone here in this room that cities are at the front lines of some of the world's biggest challenges. Um, the 600 biggest cities in the world today are home to about 1.5 billion people. They're also responsible for over 80% of the world's energy consumption and over 60% of the world's emissions of greenhouse gases. One third of these cities' populations are living in slum-like conditions. So when we think about challenges that we usually think are global, like climate change, like poverty, oftentimes those challenges are actually manifesting themselves primarily in big cities. And I would argue that that's a good thing. It's a good thing because at the city level, all of us have a lot more power to change things, to influence the political process, to shape reality in the way that we want to see it. And organizations and people from around the world are actually taking advantage of that opportunity and trying to improve their cities, make them more livable, more just. From bicycle activists to musicians to artists to urban gardeners to people who are just occupying public space with love and creativity, these people are trying to improve their cities for themselves and for other generations. My hometown is Rio de Janeiro. And Rio is a great example of a city that is undergoing massive urban transformation, changing really, really quickly and receiving a lot of investment and attention. But it's not necessarily taking into account the needs and wants and views of the people who impact some terrible consequences. Mill Hill is an organization that was created to bridge that gap, to try and bridge the gap between the city that the citizens of Rio want and the city that we have to really empower everyone who lives in Rio to participate in the political process, to have their voices heard, to give input. And for the past 18 months, we've worked on a range of issues. We've mobilized people on many different themes. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples of the work that we've been doing. So the first example comes from a 10-year-old girl, Bia. She started a campaign against the demolition of her school using this tool, the pressure cooker, panela de pressão. The pressure cooker is a tool that Mil Rio created to enable citizens anywhere in Rio to advocate for solutions to problems and issues that are important to them. And what's interesting about the pressure cooker is that it enables anyone to create a page and really ask for solutions from decision makers directly via Facebook, Twitter, or email. So we have a huge database of decision makers that are all mapped out. Bia started a campaign on the pressure cooker against the demolition of her school, and that caught her eye amongst all the other campaigns that are started every day on the pressure cooker because her school happens to be one of the best public schools in the country and the seventh best in the state of Rio. And it was marked for demolition in order to build a parking lot for the Maracanã Stadium for the World Cup. So we took that on and actually created an early, uh, an early warning system, a monitoring system, using 24-7 webcam monitoring to actually look at the school 24-7 and monitor whether a bulldozer would come, for instance, or something like that. And people could sign up to become guardians of the school and alert other guardians if they saw something dangerous happening in the school vicinity through the webcam. Other guardians will be alerted via SMS and actually come to the school to protect it. With that uh, technology and with the mobilization that we created around it, we were actually able to stop the school's demolition this past February. It was uh, planned to happen in February, and there was no real plan as to what would happen to the students. So the most probable alternative was that the students will be distributed amongst all of the other schools in the municipal system, which was obviously something that they didn't want. And the municipal government went back on its resolution and, and decided not to demolish the school right away. And they're right now talking to the school community and trying to figure out alternatives for these kids. So we're still watching that process. Another example of work that we've done in this past year and a half was around environmental code for the state of Rio. Late last year, the state government introduced a project of law in the local assembly uh, that would be voted on in an urgent uh, mode, so it was going to be voted on two days later, and it was to change the entire environmental licensing process for the state of Rio. The biggest change that it introduced was allowing the executive to actually choose which ventures 
would be exempt from an environmental licensing process and which ventures would not be exempt from that process. And that decision would, would, could be made according to criteria that n didn't necessarily need to be released to the public. So it was essentially giving the governor the power to decide on something that important without actually explaining himself. Taking a process that was already pretty untransparent and making it much worse. So we started a campaign against that project of law, and we only had a few hours because, as I told you, that was introduced in an urgent mode. So we, we sent an email to our member base around noon on a Tuesday, and the vote was on that very same Tuesday at 6 p.m. But we still got thousands of people to sign a petition, hundreds of people to show up for the vote, and hundreds of people to call their legislators, and the project of law was actually uh, withdrawn by the government. Now we're thinking about what we're going to do next with that campaign, and one option is that we would use this tool that we also created called Imagini that allows for collective ideation. And what we want to do is actually give citizens a way of drafting a better project of law, one that would actually introduce good changes into the city's, uh, the state's um, environmental licensing legislation. Because of these mobilizations, Mill Hill is now the biggest member-based civil society organization in Rio with about one in 20 young people aged to 20 to 29 year old. Uh, that a member base is coordinated by a small team. This is all of us. Some of us are heads in computers, as you can see. And we're obsessed with red shoes. And we create the tools, the technologies, the communication strategies uh, that make it easier for people to input into the political process every day. We also support it by a large base of volunteers that help us take our online actions into the offline world and have real world impact. And some of these volunteers and members are also funders. So we are a member-funded organization. These funders give anywhere from as little as $5 a month to $50 a month every, every month, and they help us pay our bills and maintain ourselves. So to sum it up, we are an independent, apartisan, political organization that operates at the city level using online tools and offline actions and a member-funding model relying on micro donations. This is the model that we hope to spread to other cities around the world, and it's already happening right here in Sao Paulo. Minha Sampa is in pre-launch mode right now. We hope that it will be launched soon, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be led by citizens of Sao Paulo, not by us, but they're using some of the technology solutions that we developed since they're all open source and open to the public. And as a next step, we hope that other entrepreneurs in other cities will also take on this model and adapt it to their own context and use it in their own cities, slowly creating a network of citizen-led initiatives everywhere in the world. I think that we can all agree that the path to sustainable development requires sustainable governance, and that sustainable governance is not actually possible without participation from the people who matter the most and not just every four years. It needs to happen every day. At the city level, that kind of political participation is not only possible in the future, it's possible right now, which is why I invite all of you to partner with us in taking this model globally and think about how you could apply it in your own cities. Thank you very much.